Hey, it's Shirley. I am an incoming first year medical student. Since you clicked on this video, that probably means that you have submitted your primary application via MCAS for MD schools or ACOMAS for DO schools. And I want to first start off by saying congratulations. That's amazing. Now it's time for secondaries, which consists of a series of short essay questions, many of which will be similar across multiple medical schools. Secondaries are a way for the medical schools to learn more about you and see if you might be a good fit for them. Some schools will screen, meaning that they will only send out secondary applications to those who meet certain minimum requirements, such as a minimum GPA or MCAT. However, the majority of schools will send out secondaries regardless of whether the applicant is qualified or not. Some schools send out secondaries immediately, whereas others may send it out after a few weeks or a few months. Regardless of when they send it out, here are 10 tips to help you write your secondary responses. Many medical schools do use the same prompts from year to year, so you can go online and see the previous prompt from past years and start pre-grading based on those. I'll leave a few links down below with such prompts. Additionally, you can go on Student Doctor Network and see what the prompts for this year are once students start receiving secondary applications and start posting those questions. Chances are the prompts will be the same, but it's never a bad idea to double check. Also, for those applying in the 2020 to 2021 cycle, be prepared to talk about how COVID-19 has affected your pre-med journey. The five most common secondary application prompts are Why do you want to apply to this school? How will you enhance our school's diversity? How will you spend your gap year? Describe a significant challenge. And is there anything you'd like us to know? Since many schools will ask these questions, it's not a bad idea to write out your response to the last four to use as a foundation from which you can build your actual answers upon. Don't worry about any word limits, just be authentic and write out your response. Once you're done, you can then cut out less relevant parts to accommodate for word limits of various applications as necessary. You can then also incorporate specific elements of that school into your response. For example, you can include the name of the school that you're applying to so that it's not obvious that you copied and pasted these responses across multiple schools. So how do you go about answering these questions? Think about aspects of each medical school that will allow you to continue pursuing your interests. First, focus on yourself and what you value, and then tie that into one, the school's mission statement, and two, a specific component of that school. Whatever you value, first write about your experience and then write about how you plan to continue pursuing that by incorporating the name of a specific program or organization of that school that you plan to get involved with. For example, if you value community service, then write about your experience and then write about how you plan to continue pursuing that at a local organization near your school. If you value research, then write about your experience and then write about how you plan to work at or volunteer in a specific lab on campus. Same goes for clinical exposure, student organizations, etc. If possible, try to incorporate names and make your answers as specific and as unique to that school as possible. It really shows that you truly research their specific programs and features and that you're not just copying and pasting generic answers that can be used for any medical school. To search for specific programs and features, you can check out the school's website, various online forums, or even ask current medical students yourself. Many medical school students will have social media accounts, and if they're not private, you can reach out and see if they'd be willing to answer a few questions regarding their experiences. You can also call admissions and ask to speak to a medical school student representative and see if they would be willing to give you a more personal account than the one you would find online. What unique experiences or perspectives do you have? Many people tend to think of diversity as either incorporating race and our culture, but there are other ways to address this question if neither of those apply to you. For example, is your major different than that of most pre-meds? Do you possess a unique skill such as playing an instrument or sports? Ideally, you would find some way to relate your response back to medicine or relate it to how you're able to use your skill or experience to connect to people. For instance, I wrote about my love for languages. I was bullied in a predominantly Hispanic elementary school, so I learned Spanish to fit in. I continue learning Spanish throughout middle school, high school, and even college, and even studied abroad in Spain. Currently, I'm teaching myself Mandarin via Duolingo, and someday I hope to be able to see Hispanic and Chinese patients without the need for a translator. Nowadays, the average age for matriculating medical students is 24, so there is no shame in having taken gap years. The purpose of this question is to seek an explanation as to why you hadn't applied to medical school during your last year of undergraduate studies. Explain why you waited to apply, what experiences you've gained as a result, and how you've learned and grown as a person during this time. You can also talk about what you plan to do between now and the time when you would matriculate into medical school. A challenge and our failure does not need to be an F on your transcript or some other concrete experience. It can be more abstract, such as having a misguided attitude or perspective and how you subsequently changed and improved upon that. Focus on a challenge that allowed you to grow as a person. 
be honest about your weaknesses, but do be careful about what you choose to write about. For example, if you've struggled with mental illness, it may not be a good idea to write about that in your application because medical schools may think that the stress and pressure of medical school and residency may cause that mental illness or mental illnesses to resurface and subsequently undermine your performance as a future doctor. If written tactfully, that may work, but just be careful when writing about certain failures that may cause medical schools to doubt your ability to provide quality patient care. With that being said, you do want to be as upfront as possible about overcoming obstacles. Think of situations where you were conflicted regarding ethics, where you had to deal with a learning curve, where you had to step out of your comfort zone, or essentially anything else that challenged you and subsequently allowed you to grow and develop as a person. Medical schools want to know how you've dealt with difficulties in the past so that they can get an idea of how you might deal with future difficulties. Medical school and residency can be very demanding and they want to accept students who are willing and able to take on such challenges. Medical schools want to give you the chance to address anything that you may not have had the chance to in the rest of your application, such as bad grades or other weaknesses or hardships. Unless you have a glaring issue that you would like to address, don't feel obligated to write something in this section. It's better to leave it blank than to fill it with fluff. Med school admissions committees go through hundreds upon hundreds of applications. Do not make them read more than is necessary. Through your personal statement and primary application, you have already addressed why you want to pursue medicine and allowed adcoms to understand you as a pre-med student. Now, secondaries allow adcoms a chance to understand you as a person. You can write about other experiences that you haven't had the chance to discuss in your primary application, experiences that allow adcoms to gain greater insight into your character and personality. The key here is to be authentic. For example, when you're writing about why you want to go to a particular school, think about whether you fit that school's mission statement. If you don't, you first want to reconsider whether you want to apply to that school at all. Yes, you may have already submitted your primary application, however, it's better to not submit your secondary and not waste any more money than to spend money on a school you don't really want to go to simply because of the sunken cost fallacy. On the other hand, if you don't resonate with every single component of that school's mission statement, but there is a certain section or certain sections that speak out to you, then you can focus on that and write about that so that you remain authentic. Yes, it has gotten cliche to say that you are passionate about something, but if you are truly passionate, that tends to shine through in your writing, as opposed to trying to force yourself to show that you care about something that you're not a huge fan of. I discussed how to show rather than tell in my video about writing your personal statement, which I'll link in the cards up above. Remember, as the saying goes, actions speak louder than words. Do not tell people how diligent or how passionate you are, but instead show them via scenarios that allow you to highlight these qualities. Do not repeat anything, whether that's from your personal statement, your most meaningful experiences, or any other part of your application. Your secondary application is an opportunity to showcase different aspects of you, not just as a pre-med student, but as a person, so make sure you use this to your advantage. You want to aim to submit your secondary application within a week, although two weeks isn't terrible. The goal is to submit as soon as possible, which is where the tip about pre-writing will come in handy. When you finally submit, that is when your application can be marked as complete and medical schools can start to consider you for interviews. However, you do not want to sacrifice quality for speed. Ideally, you would submit all of your responses within a week. However, if you need to take a few more days to write a quality response, it's better to do that than to rush through and submit a mediocre application. If you haven't had the chance to pre-write all of your responses before secondary emails start coming in, then you want to prioritize which schools are your top choice so you can submit those first. Alternatively, you want to consider which schools are the most competitive and also prioritize those if you can. Chances are you'll be receiving many secondary applications around the same time period to ensure that you don't overlook any deadlines. It's not a bad idea to create a spreadsheet to keep track of which schools you're still waiting to hear back from, the dates on which you receive your secondaries, and any hard deadlines. The purpose of writing down these deadlines isn't to remind you of when you should submit because remember, the goal is to submit as soon as possible. Rather, the goal of writing down these deadlines is to ensure that you don't miss them. For example, some schools will require you to submit your response within five days, whereas other schools may give you a few months. You want to submit all of your responses as soon as possible regardless of the school, but by writing down these deadlines, you can prioritize the ones that are due sooner to ensure that you don't miss them. I found it helpful to organize my emails into separate folders so that I can focus on the medical school application process without having to sort through irrelevant emails. I chose to separate my folders into MD versus DO, however you can choose to separate them based on interviews, secondaries, etc. The goal is just to ensure that you know where to look for an email should you need to find it in the future. You'll be receiving emails from sources that your email may not recognize. To ensure that you don't miss any deadlines because you neglected to check your junk folder, be sure to check your spam.
As with your personal statement, try to get feedback on your responses. Since many of the questions and prompts will be similar, you can simply ask the person to look over a few of them as opposed to looking over all of them. You can also focus on the responses that you'll submit to your top choices so that you're not overwhelming the person who you're asking for feedback from. Make sure to check that you've addressed the prompt as questions for various secondaries may be similar but not identical. Furthermore, and very importantly, you want to make sure that you have tailored your response to each particular school. Double check to make sure that you haven't copied and pasted recklessly and accidentally included the name of one school in your application for another school, as that does happen and it's obviously very frowned upon. And as always, check for grammar, fluidity, etc. Alright, those are my tips for writing secondaries. Remember, this is your chance to allow admissions committees to understand you not just as a pre-med student, but also as a person. Best of luck, and I'll see you next Sunday. Until then, I surely hope that you'll take care of your health.